meet the author today. I have Frida McFadden here. She probably doesn't even need an introduction at this point. Frida, thank you so much for being willing to come over on the show today. Thank you for having me. So one of the first questions is, I want to do like a little bit of an icebreaker question just to kind of get the nerves out. Um, it's a really important question. Are you more of a chocolate or a vanilla person? Um, probably vanilla, although, I mean, that's like asking to choose between your children. They're both <laughs> amazing. How could you make that decision? So vanilla, we have our answer, everybody. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, so I just kind of wanted to start off with us, you know, you telling us a little bit about yourself, um, kind of just who is Frida McFadden for some people who may are not quite familiar with you. So I am a physician, but I'm also an author. Um, I started out writing kind of women's fiction, a little bit about my, you know, experiences in residency and my training. And then I, I love reading psychological thrillers. So I started writing them and then it just became a whole thing. So now I'm an author as well. So you said you're still a practicing physician. How does that work for you that you're doing that, but then you're also writing, it seems like full time. How does that kind of work out for you and balance that? It's hard. I mean, there are days, there are, there are weeks when I'm not balancing it very well. I'm like, oh my God. But, um, you know, I work part time. So I mostly I'm done by like two ish in the afternoon. So, and I don't, I work five days a week. Some physicians work seven days a week. Some are a little bit, and I am not a brain surgeon. I just want to be really clear about that. Cause there's like a rumor going around, like on several reputable sites, like newspapers, like, She's also a brain surgeon. I am not a brain surgeon. I'm, I'm a regular physician, not surgical. So I, I can sort of balance it that way. And, um, you know, but on busy weeks, it can be very hard. I'm like, I am too much. I can't do it all. But um, I love the writing stuff. And I also love being a doctor. So I can't give either of them up. So I'm, I'm just trying to make it all work. That's awesome. So about your writing, kind of what's your typical writing process like? Do you prefer to write at home? Do you like to write maybe going other places? What is, you know, your normal when you're sitting down and you're getting into that mode? What's the best process for you? I'm usually just on my sofa with like my either my laptop or my iPad on my lap or I'm out on my porch. Similar situation. Those are my two places. I can't go to Starbucks or anything like that. I just like I got to be in my own space and I just got to hope Nobody else in the household bothers me, which is very unusual. <laughs> and what, do you, what do you feel like um, inspires you? Like, how do you feel? Where do you feel you're most inspired, I guess, is what I'm question I'm trying to ask. I mean, it's just kind of everywhere. I like to read. I like to watch movies. Sometimes I get ideas from like commercials. Sometimes it's just something happens to me in the course of my day or even like a dream or something like I, you know, I, I put out a lot of books, so I got to get ideas from everywhere. So, you know, you never know. And sometimes two things that are kind of unrelated will come together and become one idea. So it's, it's still like everywhere. It's, it's a little hard to, to say in general. That's good. So recently I feel like, this is no secret that the housemaid has kind of taken over TikTok. that everybody's been talking about that. How has that been for you as the author seeing this, like just blow up and become a huge, you know, talk it's all over social media now. How has that been for you seeing that? It's wild. And I, I have to see as somebody, I have to admit, I am not facile with TikTok. I feel like I'm a little old for it. I could do it maybe, but I might look a little stupid. So um, I'm so thrilled that it happened without me having to make TikToks. They're called TikToks <laughs> if I make them, right? Okay, I don't know. I'm, I'm so thrilled that people on TikTok like it. I'm so grateful because I don't really know how to use it. So it, it's awesome. I love it. Um, and I'm really proud of the book. It, it was one of those books where... As I was writing it, I kind of thought to myself, this could be something that really resonates with people, but you never know. Sometimes that you say that to yourself and nobody likes it. So in this case, thankfully it happened. And my editor at Bogator um, helped me a lot with some problem areas 
And I think she helped me make it into a much better book than it would have been otherwise. That's awesome. So one of my first questions that someone wanted me to ask for you about this book is, have you ever, I guess you could be this book in The Housemaid's Secret. Have you ever considered writing any point of view from Enzo? Kind of ever like a short chapter, or anything from Enzo's point of view? That's so funny. Um, so I don't know, this is, this is not an answer to your question, but um, <laughs> in my reader group, I actually, on April 1st of last year, I made a post saying that I had decided to write a steamy Enzo and Millie scene. And I put a bunch of like dots and eggplants and like things. And I'm like, here it comes, get ready for it. And it was not that, it was an April Fool's joke. But like people, <laughs> people were, were up for it, I think. They wanted that. So I'm not writing that, that's not <laughs> happening. But definitely I, I get the vibe, people want more Enzo. And I probably, if I wasn't hearing that, I don't know if, he would have ever made a reappearance but um the, if there's a third book there will be plenty of him i promise that that's awesome so i have a stack of your books here um because i've read quite a few of them and really Yay. even within like the last month <laughs> i've gone through so many of them so a question more i have for you is did you have a favorite book so far that was maybe the most fun for you to write i know that's kind of like picking favorites with children, but is there maybe one that was like the easiest for you that you just felt the story flowed out of you the best and just picking, if you had to pick a favorite, do you have one? Wait, hold up your stack one more time. I have Never Lie, I have The Inmate, I have The Housemaid's Secret, The Housemaid, and then I have Ward D. So this is my personal stack, but I know you have plenty more than just the Yeah, no, I, you know, whatever book that I'm writing or most recently wrote, I often feel closest to, but I remember The Inmate was really fun for me to write. I really enjoyed that one. And I don't know, it's just something about it that kind of fascinated me, like the prison setting and just like all the kind of drama. And so that was, that was probably one of my personal favorites. Okay. I just finished that one not that long ago. And it was again, a thriller, obviously from start to finish. I, I like to joke with this on my social media stuff that I I'm always trying to guess what's happening. You know, the housemaid was my first one of your books. So I kind of went in blind. I didn't necessarily know your writing style yet. And so everything was just like right over the top of my head, but now I'm like trying to psychoanalyze everything. And I feel like in a way I've gotten worse at trying to guess these like plot twists that are happening. I can never get them any book. I'm all, I've done my fourth one and I never see them coming. I'm always so shocked when it gets to the end. And I just, That's I think crazy. Never Lost was probably my biggest shock. Um, I just finished that one not that long ago and I got to the end and I, I was just blown away. I, I could not see awesome. that one coming. <laughs> yeah. That one definitely has an ending that surprises people. And you know, sometimes I think an ending is very unpredictable and everybody's like, I knew it the whole time. And other times I think, oh, this is so obvious and nobody gets it. So I, I'm just not good at knowing what people are going to think. I think. I think that's the moral here. So that's awesome. So not necessarily a favorite book, but within your book so far that you've written, do you have a favorite character or maybe a few favorite characters that you can think of off the top of your head? Well, Enzo, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like um, you didn't have it in the list, but the locked door. I really like the protagonist to that, Nora, because she's kind of badass. And a lot of my characters that are a little more wishy-washy are more based on me. Because, you know, like I, I, I would definitely be able to be manipulated by a serial killer if that situation came up like he'd be telling me all these lies and I'd be like okay that sounds right <laughs> <laughs> he would totally uh be able to fool me but um she's a little bit smarter and a little cooler and it's kind of like you know somebody I would admire like somebody I'd want to be so that's awesome. So that kind of leads me into another question. You said a lot of times you like have yourself in some of these characters. Do you take inspiration from the people in your life um, often to kind of put them into your characters? Or do you like to just create your characters out of nothing most of the time when you're writing these books? 
There are definitely some characters that are based on people I know. Like, I know you recently got War D. You haven't started it yet, probably. I have not started War D yet. I just finished Never Lie, like, a day and a half ago when I was gonna, I was trying so hard to start it, but I was like, I need to be, like, ready. I have to give myself a little bit of a break in between because I feel like I'm so stuck in that world for a minute. I have to, like, all right, reset and go back into a different thrill or else I'm, like, bringing something from the other one and I get a little confused. <laughs> Um, so in War D, a lot of characters were based on real life people I knew. And, you know, notably, um, it's these two medical students spending the night on a psych ward. And the other medical student who's the ex-boyfriend of the protagonist, his name is Cameron. He is totally based on this guy that I did my psychiatric rotation with 20 years ago. And he's kind of like this raid grubbing cutthroat guys kind of like obnoxious but you also sort of like him maybe i don't know and he would probably not recognize himself and he was not my boyfriend either he was not my boyfriend i want to make that clear but <laughs> for everybody <laughs> and he became a plastic surgeon i saw his website and he looked very plastic surgeon-y i don't know what that means but <laughs> he looked very important That's awesome so talking about Ward G, since I have it right here, and it's just another good example. I mean, we have the housemate here too, awesome. But when you're going to pick covers for your books, because, you know, if people have read maybe the housemate or things, you always have important pieces on the covers. How does that go for you with that whole process of designing covers and then picking them for your books? What is that like? So um, the housemate cover was designed by Book Chore, and I thought they did an amazing job. I remember I... I was nervous about it and I saw the cover and I was like, yes, I love that cover. Like immediately we connected. Um, the other books, you know, I, so I actually make the covers myself, which is probably super stupid, but I love, I them, love doing it. What? I said, I love them though. I mean, they always, I feel like it's perfect for what's going on in the story that you don't realize it sometimes. Cause again, I haven't read Ward D so I'm not, I was telling people when I first unboxed it, I was like, okay, I feel like I'm in a cell and there's a chair in the corner and I'm already creeped out. So I'm sure that's going to like play a part in the story, but you know, with the housemaid, like looking through the little keyhole and never lie the sofa. I mean, there's always little bits and pieces that I think, I mean, the covers are perfect for what's going on in the story. It's incredible that you create them. Yeah. It's not. And, and I don't, I don't like tell a person like, this is what I want. I, I literally make them myself, which because when, when I was um, in medical school for some unknown reason, my husband one day said, let's learn Photoshop. And we just learned it because we didn't have children then. And we had time to do random things like learn Photoshop. And he showed me how to do all this stuff. And then I got pretty good at it and I like it. It's, it's fun. But um, I actually recently signed with a publisher, Sourcebooks. So from now on, they're going to be making my covers. There's not going to be any Frida made it at home on, on Photoshop covers. But they made the cover of my new book, The Coworker, that's coming out in August. So let's talk about um, that one a little bit. If people don't know that you have do have that new book coming out, The Coworker. Yeah. Kind of, what's your teaser for that, if you can kind of give us um, some information there? So I'm so excited about this book. I've had this book, I've been working on it forever. So I'm really excited, especially to be doing it with Source Books, who's been amazing so far. Um, it's about, it's an office setting. Uh, these two women who work together and one of them goes missing. And um, the other woman is concerned about her, you know, looking for her. And at the same time, we get a glimpse as the reader into the emails of the missing woman and we start to realize that she was bullied pretty badly at the company and some of the stuff that the other woman is presenting in her side of the story is not maybe the reality um and the the woman who goes missing she's also a little bit um of a strange character and uh she's very obsessed with turtles so that's part of the story so that's awesome. My boyfriend loves turtles. His, his like dream one day is to like when we retire to so, like move to Florida and open a turtle rescue. So really? Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to get him to read it so I can be like, yes, learn more about turtles. You love turtles. 
you got to read this book. <laughs> I I was inspired by you, you asked who I'm inspired by in real life. Um, I had a um, a friend, and he um, his wife was really I wouldn't say obsessed, but she liked turtles a lot. So he would he and I he worked together. He was a doctor too, and um, we would he would always give me a, a ride home from work and we'd always have to stop off at a store to buy a, his wife some turtle related charm or whatever. He's like, Oh, we gotta get, I gotta get turtles for Rebecca. And like, and, or he'd buy her flowers. He was a very good husband. Sounds like it. Yeah. Sounds like it. Um, so another, this was another TikTok. Like someone would ask you questions. Um, they wanted to know how you know so much about Oregon. Oregon. Well, <laughs> I actually lived in California for a while, so I'm kind of familiar with the West Coast. I, I don't write about it as much just because I feel a little more connected to the East Coast just because I grew up in New York, so it's kind of my place. But I actually lived in California for about five years and traveled a little bit around there while I was there. So that's how I got to know all of the West Coast places. That's awesome. Let's see. I want to keep going. I have my list of questions here, but I want to make sure I hit them. Okay. Here's another good one. So for when it comes to like marketing, how do you personally as the author kind of like to market some market, some of your books um, as they're getting ready to come out and be published and things like that? So um, I do run ads, um, you know, Amazon, sometimes Facebook, uh, Bogachor, I know runs Facebook ads and um a lot of it is actually the Amazon algorithm just kind of helping me out at this point and definitely social media. And some of it's just like me having a good time, like me, you know, just like I have a reader group. I just try to have fun in it. And I think people like that. They know that I'm not, you know, pushing anything all the time. I'm just trying to have fun because I, I like to write and I only get to publish three books per year. But in this writing, in this reader group, I get to write every day and I get to share it with people. So I, I just find that cool. Um, and, you know, people in the group, you know, I say to them, if you like the book, if you liked it, please tell people about it. And they will. And, you know, it's genuine excitement when they tell people mm -hmm. about it. I don't want I don't want people who hate the book to just be going out. Well, she told me to to, you know, tell people about it. So I'm going to do it. I want genuine excitement because you can always tell when something is genuine. Okay, so I have kind of a challenge for you now, and this may be a little bit difficult, but not okay. be too challenging. So I have my five books here that we're going to do it with, and then we'll also use the coworker as an example. So I'm going to hold a book up, and if you could describe the book that I hold up in one word, just whatever the first word that comes to your mind. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll start off. We'll start off easy with this one. Um, attic. I think that's a good one. Okay, let's see. We'll skip around. Prison. Is psych ward one word? Sure. We can do sure. that. How about isolation? Seclusion. 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 Now okay. we'll a lot of words. I'm cheating. We'll Sorry. The coworker next. The coworker. Turtles. Turtles. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> That's true. I was already thinking about it in my head. Okay. Um, hmm. That one's hard. Uh, hmm. Enzo. I don't know. <laughs> that, could, that could be fair. Okay. Uh, psychiatrist. I do. I like that. I don't know what it was about this book. When I was reading it like halfway through, I was, have you ever seen the TV? I'm sure you have the uh, Netflix show, You? Yes. All I could think about with, I don't want to give spoilers away, but you know, yeah. a certain character um, with EJ, I guess it doesn't spoil too much. That's all I could think about when we were, when I was reading this book and I was just like, that's just in my head. I was just like, this is like you, this is this. like Joe in the, yes. in you. yeah, so, Joe Goldberg, right? <laughs> That's a good show. I really like that show. I, I haven't watched the most recent season though. I haven't either. I was kind of stopped after the first two, but if I was, I was literally trying to explain it to someone. I was like, if you could make a TV show into a thriller, but like even more so because it's like not like that, but it is. 
It's like, this would be it. This would be this book. It's crazy from start to finish. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> that was that was actually, that book was actually um, inspired and you're never, ever, like if you had to guess what the inspiration for that book is, you would never, ever guess this in a million years. I'm going to tell you and you're just going to probably look at me like, what? so let's see. So it was actually inspired by an episode of the TV show, Bob's Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> How did that come about? It was, it was this episode where for some reason they're spending the night in this like isolated house or something and somebody's trying to kill them in the house. I actually mentioned it in an online question and answer and somebody the next day said it wasn't this episode and I was like it was it was that episode <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> so if you could ever which I know obviously you write thrillers if you could ever try to write or wanted to write a genre that wasn't a thriller what would you what would your other kind of genre be for a book um well you know, I have written some of those women's fiction. I mean, I could go back to that, but you know what? I I would like at some point, maybe far in the future, to do like some sort of supernatural type of thing. And not like, I would never do like a thriller where the twist is like, oh, a ghost did it at the end. Like, I don't think that's fair, but like something where you know it's supernatural from the beginning. So like, it's acceptable that the twist involves that in some way. Talking about supernatural things, we'll, we'll go off on a little bit of a deep end here for a second. Do you believe in certain supernatural things like ghosts or aliens or Bigfoot? I, I think that there are aliens out there because the universe is very big. I don't think that they're here, I think, but I think they're somewhere. And okay. the other stuff, not so much. <laughs> not so much on ghosts? Not so much, not so much. I mean, you never know, but eh, probably not. <laughs> but maybe, I don't know. I don't wanna wanna go on record as anti-ghost. Could be. <laughs> anti-ghost, anti-Bigfoot, it's okay. Yeah, but, but definitely pro-alien. Pro-alien, okay, <laughs> you heard it here first. So I listened to some of your books um, on with using audiobooks. So I know, at least with the two books that I had, uh, you have Leslie Howard um, mm -hmm. has been the narrator. Do you like to kind of stick with one narrator or how does that work for you going from having like writing the book to now having it narrated? What is that process like? So Leslie's amazing. Um, she's done a bunch of my books now. She also did War D. Um, she's very professional and wonderful, and I love her voice. And another one that I use a lot is um, Allison Krawchuk. She did uh, The Coworker that's coming up okay. soon, and she's done a few of my backlist titles. Um, she's she, she's very good, too. And she's actually the closest, I think, to the voice that's just in my head when I'm, like, writing these books. So that's what I like about her. Um, and I've also used a few audiobook production companies like Podium and Dream Escape, and they pick their own narrators, usually very good ones. And, um, and it's cool. Like, it's, it's fun to hear the um, book read to you. It's always like when I, I listen to them to kind of proof them, I, it's always so much fun to hear these like professionals reading my book. Though, what's funny is like when I tell people like, oh, I did, I, I'm producing the audiobook myself, they think that I am reading it. And they're like, Rita, you should read it. And I'm like, I should not. I'm <laughs> not good at that. Like, you have to know your limits. And I know I would not be good at, like, I'm not an actor. I'm not like a voice actor. I wouldn't be good at that. <laughs> and you said you write you try to publish three books a year. So what is your writing process like? I mean, that's a lot to write three books in a year. What is your writing process like? Again, you said you work as you're still a practicing physician. So what is your writing process like when you're, you know, not at working? What does a typical writing day look like for you? Um, I, you know, a lot of planning happens in my head. Like when I'm at, especially like I take, I like to take long walks around my town and I'm always thinking like, as I'm listening to music, I'm always thinking, like what's gonna happen in the plot or like when I'm lying in bed, when I should be trying to sleep, 
I'm plotting it out. Shower, big place for plotting for me. So I'm always thinking about it for like months before. And then when it actually is, you know, time to write, I write pretty quickly because I've got it all planned out in my head. And then, you know, I spend after that a long time editing it and I give it to a million beta readers and get opinions and change things. So it's the actual physical, I'm writing it, that is actually not the most time consuming. It's like all the other stuff. Okay. So would you say you're more of an outline person? I had a different author on a different interview and she said that there's usually two, two different types of authors. You have ones that's more like outline and like plot, you know, over there. And then you have some that just kind of like spit it all out as they're kind of thinking it and they're just going as they go. Are you more of a structured outline type of person before you go into the writing process? Um, I am an outliner in my head. So it's in my head, but I don't write anything down. Like I don't write, this is what's going to happen in chapter one. This is what's going to happen in chapter two. But I, I've been doing this long enough. Like I've been writing stories since literally I was nine years old. So at this point, like I kind of, once I start going, I feel very comfortable with like, this is how the story should progress. Mm -hmm. And so it just becomes like easy in that way to just keep going. Um, and with an outline, I feel like if something were to change, if the characters were to speak to me in some way, and I feel like it's not going like how I think it should go, I'd have to rewrite everything. And But now I could just sort of like rework it in my head while I'm showering or walking or trying to sleep. So <laughs> um, it's just easier to do it that way. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm comfortable with. So... I know we're getting kind of closer to the end here. Um, so you said you normally have three books, again, that you publish every year. So the next one coming out, you said, is The Coworker. So just kind of, again, walk us through maybe some of the characters. You've kind of talked about the plot a little bit with this. Um, is there any, maybe not a spoiler, but more of a teaser that we can get a little bit early since we still have to wait a little bit more till August for this to come out? So, um, you know, one of the things I love about the books is it takes place in a nutritional supplement company. So it's actually the company that sells nutritional supplements. And that was actually my husband's idea. I said to him, like, I, I think what, what kind of company should they work at? And he was like a nutritional, it's got to be a nutritional supplement company. I don't know how he came up with that. So I have to thank him. He probably hears this. He's been walking around in the background for this entire interview. You may have heard him like hawking up phlegm at one point. I'm glad that <laughs> I hope that made it into the video. I really do. Um, <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, and it's just a little bit about the world of like, you know, people who work at a company like that. And it's also about workplace bullying. And I'm kind of fascinated by that because I think a lot of people in their lifetime have experienced bullying. Like I was bullied as a kid in school. I mean, I, I know a lot of people were and it, it sucks. And for it to continue happening in adulthood, I mean, it does you to happen to a lot of people and just you know to see that frustrating experience um i think i just wanted to explore that more mm -hmm. um, and how that could happen and how it just like continues to escalate for this mm -hmm. poor woman so you said with some of your books that after you write them you're kind of like okay i feel like that plot choice was coming from a mile away and other ones you're like okay that's a really good one i think people will be surprised with this book do you feel like it falls on one side or the other when it comes to, because you always have plot twists in your book. And again, they go over my head every single time and I'm always so mad, but how do you feel about this certain plot twist for this one? I actually thought it was super obvious, but my beta readers are like, oh, I didn't guess it. Wow, that twist. So I'm like, okay, maybe it's not. So I thought the house made twist was pretty obvious. So, you know, that, one again, that was my first one. So maybe that's why I was like just going in blind and I was like, I'm going to pick up this Freedom of Fadden book. Like, let's just do this. And then I got to, I think it's part two. And I was at the gym when I finished part two or part one. I was on the treadmill. And I just had to put my phone down. I like looked at my boyfriend. And I was like, you will not believe what I just read. <laughs> and he was so like, great. What is wrong with you? And I was like, you don't understand. <laughs> I was shocked. I was absolutely was shocked. Awesome. I think it's my own fault, you know, for reading at the gym that my reactions, whatever they're going to be, are just. Yeah, your heart rate's escalated. Exactly. So, yeah, it's like this 
uber reading experience. That's awesome. And one more question before I'll kind of have you um, plug where everyone can find you and everything is, do you have any other books that are maybe in the works that you can give us a teaser tour that's coming in the future too, that you can kind of get fans excited for? I don't know if I'm allowed to say, I don't want to get in trouble with my publisher, but it is with source books. I did sign a three book deal. So there's one coming in February and one coming in June. And I'm very excited about both of them. They're both books I really love. So hopefully they'll all be good experiences. That's really exciting. So make sure let's give you, I guess, announce where people can find you, um, the best way for them to kind of get plugged into your world and where they can find your books and things like that. So most of my books right now, you'll find them on Amazon. The Housemaid is in all stores and soon the Housemaid Secret starting July 11th, that one's hitting all the stores too. And uh, the coworker will hit all the stores on August 29th. Um, but in the meantime, everything's on Amazon and you could go to my website, um, www.frida McFadden and that's Frida F R. E-I, E-I, not what you learned in school, Frida, <laughs> D-A, RitaMcBadden.com. And you could also join my reader group, which is super fun. And I'm posting pictures with turtles now. So it's Frida McFans on Facebook. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on here today. We had so much fun uh, getting to talk yeah. to you. And again, it's incredible, this all the stuff that you're doing um, with these books and just everything. Again, I think you are a fantastic author and you write incredible thrillers. So, so excited to read The Coworker and the other books that you're teasing that are coming out soon. And I appreciate you taking the time to be willing to come on here and chat with me today. Thank you so much, Michaela. This is so much fun. All right. And you guys make sure that you are subscribed to me so you can see all of the author interviews to come. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. Thanks.